3 we are continuing and till text 10 yesterday we did today text 11 ok. Devan bhavayata nena te deva bhavayantu va parasparam bhavayanta shreya param vapsayatha Devan the demigods being pleased by sacrifices will also please you and thus by cooperation between men and demigods prosperity will reign for all. Previous verse says that uh, Krishna created sacrifice and sacrifices means everything should be done for the satisfaction of Vishnu. Okay. So, here the previous shloka it says that the purpose of material creation is that the Jivatma will get an opportunity to come back home back to Godhead. Okay. So, for that he has to satisfy Krishna and for uh, every activity should be done as a satisfaction to uh, for, for the satisfaction of Krishna, Yajna. Okay. So, cause of conditioning in uh, then this uh, Yajna means to satisfy the Vishnu and that is the, uh, we discussed in the age of Kali Yuga it is Sankirtan Yajna. Okay. Now, when one perform yajna, so two things happen. What first is that uh, one's material desires will be fulfilled when you do yajna. Okay, so that is explained from 3.11 to 3.14. And then second thing happened out of yajna is that so uh, that is the that heart will be purified and one will be out of the material world. So, that is explained in 3.15 and 3.16, ok. So, Yajna is created by Supreme Lord, so that some people will be attracted towards performing some sacrifice, some Yajna, why? Because they have some material desires. So, in order to get fulfilled those material desires, they will do Yajna. And in that way, they are performing sacrifices that means they are engaged in the Vedic um, processes and they are following the rules of Krishna so they will be gradually purified and then their heart will be purified and they gradually they will come to devotional service that is the point ok so that is the uh, uh, link here ok so now 3.11 to uh, 11, 12, 13, 14 in these four verses it will be explained that how yajnas fulfill the material desires. How our desire can be fulfilled in material world by devtas worship. Okay, some people do that. So the demigods are empowered administrators. So here is uh, very important to understand. Okay, so it says that the the demigods are. Em this is uh, text number. 11 of 3rd chapter you can open. So, the demigods are empowered administrators of material affairs. They are not the supreme lord but they are the uh, in charge of one department you can understand like that. So, the supply of air, light, water and all other benedictions for maintaining the body and soul of every living entity is entrusted to the Demigod. So, one, one devta is in charge of water, one is for light, one is for air, like that Krishna created all the arrangement. So, who are all these demigods are innumerable assistants in different parts of the body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Prabhupada is writing here, the supply of air, light, water and all other benedictions for maintaining the body and soul of every living entity is entrusted to the demigods who are innumerable assistants in different parts of the body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, they are somewhere or other part also uh, part and parcel of Krishna. So, their pleasures and displeasures are dependent on the performance of Yajna by the human being. So, when human being perform Yajnas for Devatas, then Devatas become pleased and they give you the uh, required things. Okay, You must be knowing that Govardhan pastime where 
and Nanda Baba and all, they were saying that we have to worship Indra so that he will be pleased and he will give us rain because he is in charge of rain. When rain comes, then grains comes and that is required. Okay, so some of the yajnas are meant to satisfy particular demigods. But even in so doing, Lord Vishnu is worshipped in all yajnas as a chief beneficiary. So actually, even though yajnas are done like somebody may do any yajna for fire god or any other devta. But still in all the yajnas, Vishnu will be there as a chief person. Chief beneficiary means the head, bhokta, supreme enjoyer. It is, all, it is stated also in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna himself is the beneficiary of all kinds of yajnas, bhoktaram, yajnatapsam. Bhoktaram, yajnatapsam. Therefore, ultimate satisfaction of the yajnapati is the chief purpose of all yajnas. So, any yajna done, even though the yajna is for um, any devta or any puja is done for any devta, but the head will be there, Vishnu. So, all things are done for the pleasure of Vishnu only. Okay, ultimate satisfaction of the Yajnapati is the chief purpose of all Yajnas. So, why in all the Yajnas, Vishnu is uh, situated as Yajnapati? Because uh, the purpose is to satisfy him only. So, all the Yajnas having one purpose, that satisfaction of the Yajnapati, who is actually Vishnu. So, when these Yajnas are perfectly performed, naturally, the demigods in charge of the different departments of supply are pleased. So, when you do some, like you want a passport, you go and do something, some service to the passport in charge. He will give you some required, uh, whatever is under his control, he will give you that help, right? So, they are pleased. Those de- demigods are pleased. And there is no scarcity in the supply of natural products. So, that's why if uh, humans uh, mm, don't do uh, sacrifices, there will be scarcity of many things. So, if you do proper mm, worship or sacrifice for Indra, he will give you proper rain. He is in charge of rain. So, he can give you, if he is angry, he will not give rain or he will give too much rain. So, what you need a balanced rain. So, for that you have to please Indra. If you need proper heat you worship sun god health you worship sun god like that many everything has a in charge and supreme in charge is krishna all the in charge are under whose control krishna so krishna is the supreme in charge of all the in charge controller of all the controllers okay sarvalok maheshwaram so uh, performance of yajnas has many side benefits Ultimately leading to liberation from material bondage. Okay, so when even the person does yajna for sense for his um, desire for any for, for the fulfillment of any desire, but still he is following the Krishna's rule, Krishna's system. So he will get purified. Sometime you might have seen in the school like some children do some some mistake, but then teacher will say no 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 problem because he fo- he listened my word. So, I am forgiving him. Even though he did little wrong, but he followed what I said. Na? So, it's okay. Because at least he, he uh, followed my instruction. So, because you are, even though for his own purpose, but still he is doing some yajna, which is mentioned in Vedas. So, in that way, he is actually following some instruction of Krishna or he is agreeing or accepting some rules of Krishna. That means he will still get purified. So, in this way, gradually this process will purify him fully. So, by performance of yajnas, all activities become purified. As it is stated in the Vedas, Ahar Suddhau Sattva Suddhi Sattva Suddhau Dhruva Smriti Smriti Lambhe Sarve Granthi Nam Vipra Mokshaha By performance of yajna, one's eatables become sanctified. So, when you do some, this is a very important thing here, when you do some yajna, your eatables are sanctified. That means that's what yajna means anything for the pleasure of Krishna, anything you sacrifice. So that's what we eat. What? So we cook food and then what we do? We cook food and we offer it to Krishna. Right? That's what we do. 
so that is sacrifice so when we offer to krishna it become mahaprasad sanctified and by eating sanctified food is the once very existence become purified so when we eat krishna prasad our existence become purified we are no more contaminated so that's why taking more and more prasad like is very important that means um, not taking anything which is not prasad no eat don't eat anything which is not prasad only eat things which are prasad okay so then we will become very fast uh, purification will happen as it, as it is stated in the vedas ahar uh, okay so food stuffs uh, by performance of yagna once eatables become sanctified and by eating sanctified food is the once very existence become purified by the purification of existence finer tissues in the memory become sanctified finer tissues in the memory become sanctified and when memory is sanctified one can think of the path of liberation then only when memory is purified then one will think about krishna mukti all this thing and all these combined together lead to krishna consciousness the great necessity of present day society so everything starts from ahar suddha okay so our food should be pure and how we will make pure food pure by purely by following the pure process of cooking and then offering it to krishna okay so when we our food is pure then our chetna will be pure and uh, that means our existence will be pure our body tissues will be pure our memory will be pure our chetna will be pure and in this way we can always think about krishna ishtan bhogan hi vo deva dasyante yagya bhavita tair dattan pradayai bhyo yo bhungte stena eva saha so in charge of the various necessities of life the demigods being satisfied by the performance of yagya sacrifice will supply all necessities to you but he who enjoys such gifts without offering them to the demigods in return is certainly a thief some people if they are enjoying the these results and not doing sacrifice they are thief like you are enjoying the sunlight you are enjoying the moonlight air water everything then you are a thief because you are not doing sacrifice to please demigods so one should not think are i am not doing but if one is doing krishna bhakti then every all the demigods are automatically satisfied so then you are no more a thief so the demigods are authorized supplying agents on behalf of the supreme personality of godhead vishnu therefore they must be satisfied by the performance of prescribed yagna that means like if you want any thing you are paying some tax na to that department right you pay tax so it is like that okay all the departments you have to pay some tax so that sacrifice yagya is like tax okay so in the vedas there are different kinds of yagyas prescribed for different kinds of demigods but all are ultimately offered to the supreme personality of godhead for one who cannot understand what the personality of godhead is sacrifice to the demigods is recommended so if you are if a person so why this actually if you are doing krishna bhakti then no need to do all the demigod worship so for people who cannot understand krishna for them this demigod worship is mentioned because they cannot understand krishna they cannot understand that is a supreme god so for them one step down okay you you want this you do this you want this go to this department you want this you go to this department like that but a person who knows say like if you few don't have direct introduction with uh, prime minister then you have to go to particular department only na but if you are directly uh, knows if you directly know prime minister you just go to go and tell him na i want this file this document or this work he will just call a my friend is there finish for him all the work so all the departments are ready to serve you so that's how it is so if you please krishna then all the demigods are happy with you okay so that's why a person who cannot understand what the personality of godhead is who, who is krishna they cannot understand for that kind of people 
demigod worship is recommended according to the different material qualities of the persons concerned different types of yagyas are recommended in the vedas worship of different demigod is also on the same basis namely according to different qualities so what kind of so vedas are explaining so many things about so many people if you have this understanding you do this if you have this qualification you do this so at, so one should not think that everything mentioned in vedas is for us so worship of demigod is mentioned in vedas but for who those people who don't know krishna who cannot understand krishna but that does not mean that if you are able to understand krishna then also you have to do demigod worship no for example uh, okay so worship of de- different demigod is also on the same basis namely according to different qualities for example the meat eaters are recommended to worship the god as kali so they should do something so then only they will be purify the ghastly form of material nature and before the goddess the sacrifice of animals is recommended but for those who are in the mode of goodness the transcendental worship of vishnu is recommended but ultimately all yagyas are meant for gradual promotion to the transcendental position for ordinary men at least five yagyas known as panch mahayagya are necessary so one should know however so this is like here said panch panch mahayagya all this is for normal people who cannot understand krishna so one should know however that all the necessities of life that the human society requires are supplied by the demigod agents of the lord no one can manufacture anything take for example all the eatables of human society these eatables include grains fruits vegetables milk sugar etc for the persons in the mode of goodness and also eatables for the non vegetarians like meats uh, none of which can be manufactured by man so whether it is vegetarian non vegetarian but nobody can manufacture it then again take for example heat light water air etc which are also necessities of life none of them can be manufactured by the human society nobody is creating light or heat right without the supreme lord there can be no profuse sunlight moonlight rainfall breeze etc without no one can live without which no one can live obviously our life is dependent on supplies from the lord even for our manufacturing enterprises we require so many raw materials like metal sulfur mercury manganese and so many essentials all of which are supplied by the agents of the lord with the purpose that we should make proper use of them to keep ourselves fit and healthy for the purpose of self realization leading to the ultimate goal of life namely liberation from the material struggle for existence so that's what many people they think that they have done a very great invention but for their invention whatever raw material was there that raw material is created by krishna only okay who created that raw material krishna so people are very much proud see we developed this thing that thing who gave the raw material krishna so if you say how oh, we have created bridge over this much wide river or from here to there we have created a tunnel this much big a statue this um, uh, space shape and all who gave the raw material like you have a space ship so that metal plastic whatever is used in creating that space ship that that fuel which is used who created you might have been taken out from the earth but there who created god krishna right so nobody can deny from this okay but some people fool people they will say i did i did it but a devotee will say no it's all mercy of krishna so the aim of life is attained by performance of yagya if we forget the purpose of human life and some and simply take supplies from the agents of the lord for sense gratification and become more and more entangled in material existence which is not the purpose of creation certainly we become thieves and therefore we are punished by the laws of material nature so if we are not doing yagya and we are taking all these things then we become thieves a society of thieves can never be happy because they have no aim in life so if somebody is not doing sacrifice but he is taking things 
from nature then they are actually thieves and uh, society where all the thieves are living they will have no aim of life they will be never happy so the gross materialist thieves have no material goal of life the gross materialist thieves have no ultimate goal of life they are simply directed to sense gratification that's it for them there is no further thing they want sense gratification ahar nidra bhay mahatun nor do they have knowledge of how to perform yagyas okay this gross materialist people lord chaitanya however inaugurated the easiest performance of yagya namely the sankirtan yagya which can be performed by anyone in the world who accept the principles of krishna consciousness okay so this uh, demigods are being pleased by sacrifices and uh, when they are pleased by sacrifices they give necessary things okay so that's a cooperation between men and demigods so that the prosperity will remain without yagya one is a thief that's another point today that one who enjoys the gifts without offering them to the demigods is certainly a thief because demigods are the in charge so they are supplying so we have to pay the tax also otherwise we are the uh, thief so the entire process of this sacrifice is designed to foster a mood of dependency and service within the hearts of materialistic people that is very important that when they do this thing then they develop a mentality that we are depending upon someone we have to serve someone we are under someone's control so they live very peacefully otherwise they become like nobody is there on top of me that is very like dangerous situation so with this goal in mind krishna explains that those who receive the fruits of sacrifice without recognizing and consequently offering back to the lord and the demigods is a thief partaking of sinful life okay so uh, okay so here first of all uh, prabhupa told about the demigods that who are the demigods so they are the empowered administrators of material affairs and then innumerable assistants in different parts of the body of the supreme personality of godhead and third point is authorized supplying agents on behalf of the supreme personality of godhead okay so that is the three definitions of demigods given by shil prabhupad in the purport second point functions of the demigods so supply all the benedictions necessary to keep body and soul together and second is their pleasure and displeasure depend on the performance of yagya so who is the chief uh, what is the chief purpose of all the yagyas ultimately satisfy ultimate satisfaction of yagyapati vishnu okay bhuktaram yagyatapsam and what is the benefit of performing yagya so no scarcity of the supply of natural product no, and uh, so if all the natural products are applied properly then the happiness in this world is guaranteed and then gradual purification to help ultimate liberation this happens in the following steps okay so what happens that this thing happen but side by side what happening is side benefit is that gradually person is becoming purified towards and he is get he is moving towards liberation so the process is explained there that when eatables are sanctified by yagya so when the food is purified then the existence is purified then finite issues in the memory are sanctified and in this way one can think of path of liberation always and then all these combined lead to krishna consciousness that is the uh, point proper saying that the krishna consciousness is the great necessity of present day society so by reading this 3.11 everybody will be so much um, interested or or enthusiastic towards doing demigod worship that's why the second shloka is there that for whom sacrifice to demigod is recommended who should do if ultimately beneficiary is supposed to be vishnu so whose worship i should do so this is for one who cannot understand the 
supreme personality of god so if, if alpameda sam krishna says in bhagavad gita that if you are less intelligent then for you bhagavatam is not there for you it is bhagavad gita which one should read so when one read bhagavad gita one become very um, knowledgeed or learned in the spiritual knowledge okay so who cannot understand bhagavad gita who don't know about krishna who don't know about god supreme god na that people uh, should do demigod worship so be, uh, they are recommended based on different modes of different person so ultimate goal of all yoga is gradual promotion to transcendental position so different different modes so different different food they like okay so uh, they are recommended based on different modes of different person okay so what yagya i should do i have to so it depends on my mood so if somebody is in the rajoguna for him different type of yagya satoguna person different type of yagya tamoguna person different type of yagya like if a person who is already in satoguna he don't need to go and offer bali for animal sacrifice to kali but a tamoguni person eating everything for him said you go and do at least some offering to the kali like that so all material necessities come through yagya that is a next point so all eatables whether vegetarian or non vegetarian everything sustain on the water okay heat light water air etc nothing is created by uh, humans everything is created by god okay so even the manufacturing uh, factories the raw material is created by uh, krishna so Uh, why these demigods are supplying all these things to us so that we can keep the body and soul together and practice bhakti so if somebody does not perform yagya so they are called thief okay and when they are when all the people are living in the society they are if thief that means they are not performing any yagya to perform vishnu or krishna that means they have no aim in life okay so a person uh, who is uh, thief who is thief who is not performing yagya so they they forget the purpose and uh, why devtas are doing so because uh, they are giving so that you can live nicely happily peaceful healthy life and chant hare krishna or do bhakti okay so if they are not doing then they are called thief and when they in the society where all the thieves are living these people will never be ha- happy because they will be always having those kind of mentality to steal and more and more and all those things so their aim have they have no aim in the life their aim is only eating sleeping mating defending some more enjoy sense gratification and that's it they have no higher aim of life okay and so one should do yagya and what is the yagya recommended for this age hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare sankirtan yagya sankirtana kalav yuge so in kal yuga only one yagya sankirtan yagya in other yugas other processes are there like tapasya dd worship temple worship or havan fire sacrifice but along with these solutions hare krishna mahamantra and chanting of the holy name sankirtan is also there in other yugas that means in other yugas sankirtan will also work in other yugas if somebody chant hare krishna it will work even though the process is different but in kal yuga because the process itself is chanting hare krishna other will not work other processes will not work only so that's a very dangerous thing so we have we are fortunate that we got the process which the one which is uh, the one which only going to work no other process will work the only process which will work in kaliyuga is hari krishna chanting and we already got so we are fortunate so we are, we have to be grateful to shil prabhupad okay hari krishna thank you so much shil prabhupad ki jai grantashram bhagavad gita ki jai so if you have any questions